So they took charge of Jesus. He went out, carrying his cross, and came to the place of the skull, as it is called. In Hebrew, it is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and they also crucified two other men, one on each side, with Jesus between them. Pilate wrote a notice and had it put on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, is what he wrote. Many people read it because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city. The notice was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. What I have written stays written. After the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier. They also took the robe, which was made of one piece of woven cloth without any seams in it. The soldiers said to one another, let's not tear it, let's throw dice to see who will get it. This happened in order to make the scripture come true. They divided my clothes among themselves and gambled for my robe. And this is what the soldiers did. Standing close to Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there. He is your son. Then he said to the disciple, She is your mother. From that time, the disciple took her to live in his home. Jesus knew that by now, everything had been completed. And in order to make the scripture come true, he said, I am thirsty. A bowl was there, full of cheap wine. So a sponge was soaked in the wine, put on a stalk of hyssop, and lifted up to his lips. Jesus drank the wine. It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Then the Jewish authorities asked Pilate to allow them to break the legs of the men who had been crucified and to take the bodies down from the crosses. No! They requested this because it was Friday no! and they did not want the bodies to stay on the crosses on the Sabbath since the coming Sabbath was especially holy. So the soldiers went and broke the legs of the first man and then of the other man who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, plunged his spear into Jesus' side. 
<laughs> and at once, blood and water poured out. The one who saw this happen has spoken of it, so that you may also believe. What he said is true, and he knows that he speaks the truth. This was done to make the scripture come true. Not one of his bones will be broken. And there is another scripture that says, people will look at him whom they pierced. asked Pilate if he could take Jesus' body. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. We'll try it one more time. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good evening. I believe it is possible to live in the solemnity of this day, but to also live in its goodness. For indeed, today is Good Friday. So I invite you to turn to your neighbor and say, this is a good Friday. This is a good Friday. We'll try it another way. Look at your other neighbor and say, this is a good Friday. Friday. And indeed, we greet you um, here at Mission Bend United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Eric Solari, and so we greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, as we once again acknowledge today as Good Friday. And as we open our time here together, we want to center in on prayer. Um, because prayer enables us to enter into that unique space where we can cry out to God, but God can speak a word to us. And I believe that that is what Good Friday is all about. It's about God reaching to us to meet us in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our anguish and our sorrow, and so God is meeting us here in this space. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer, brothers and sisters. O oh Lord, we acknowledge today, we acknowledge the pain and suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We acknowledge the sin disobedience and rebellion that held him there, that held him on the cross as he cried out, as he was wounded and in pain, but he was not abandoned. And neither are we this evening, O God. You are here in the midst of us, Lord, surrounding us, reminding us that you have not abandoned us. For indeed, God, as we have been centering to this day, to this weekend, as we acknowledge this season of life, this, this Easter season, we're reminded of the words of St. John, how for God so loved this world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Oh God, we, we rest in that good news for us this evening, this good Friday, this day of the Lord. We center our hearts and our minds on this, oh God. And as we journey through the seven last words of Christ, oh God, I pray you would Open our hearts and our minds. Move us, God, so that we would not leave the same way that we entered into this space. 
I pray over our brothers and sisters who entered into this, this home, this hallowed house, God, feeling lonely, feeling depressed, feeling anxious, feeling worried. Oh, God, I pray you would surround them with peace. You would draw near to them now. Oh, God, I pray for those who are feeling unwell in this, in this house and people perhaps we know who are unwell and in need of healing and restoration. We pray for that in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray over this weekend for the lives of many, God, who will turn to you, who will seek you, who will acknowledge that you indeed are our Savior, our God, and our King. Help us now, O oh God. Help us. Help us to not be distracted this evening, God, as we center in on this message. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. And amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as you are able as we gather to sing What Wondrous Love Is This, which is hymn number 292 in your hymn books. Let us stand and worship. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse? For my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this? O oh, my soul, what wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of life to lay aside his crown for my soul, for my soul to lay aside his crown for my soul. This time you may be seated. We have uh, prepared some readers to read the seven last words of Christ. You may notice that we won't have the scriptures on the screen, and that's not because we ran out of time. <laughs> it's because as these readings are being read, we invite you to perhaps close your eyes, to center in on the reader as they're reading, and after two readings, we'll sing, and we'll sing, Were You There?, and during those times of singing, you'll be invited to stand as you are able. And so let us prepare our hearts and our minds, brothers and sisters. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Luke 23, verse 34. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? 
for you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we've been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you. Today, you will be with me in paradise. This was Luke 23, 39 through 43. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. This is John nineteen twenty-five through 27. this aware that everything was now finished in order that the scripture might be fulfilled Jesus said I thirst there was a vessel filled with common wine so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth this is John 19 verse 28 to 29 When they nailed him to the tree, were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it calls me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced him?
At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is Mark 15, 33 to 34. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. This is John 19, verse 30. sun refused to shine were you there when the sun refused to shine oh sometimes it causes me Tremble, tremble, tremble. Are you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when they laid him? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the This is a Good Friday service, but it seems like we've been doing a lot of working out, haven't we? I want to thank our readers and our music today. Thank you, Hilton and Dr. Dan, and uh, readers once again. Um, aren't we so grateful for these readers who've come forward? And uh, y'all, y'all can, uh, y'all, y'all can, uh, yes, amen. Um, I know, I know it, even me, I get awkward sitting up here. So y'all, y'all are good to go if y'all, uh, we're good to go. Y'all did an awesome time reading. Uh, I heard somebody say thank you. <laughs> thank you for releasing me. I don't know about you, but spending time singing that song has got me stirred up. And I think that song calls to mind where we kind of fit in the story. The reading that I have for us is in many ways a repeat of our previous reading in John chapter 19, verse 30. When he had received the drink... Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. 
I invite you to turn to your neighbor and say, it is finished. Join me as I pray for us. Oh God, we've gathered here. We've gathered here this evening to meditate, to draw closer to your word and to your presence. God, I believe that your presence is tangible in this space. I feel it as I hear the voices of those gathered in this house singing these songs, mouthing the verses that we've been reading. And God, I just pray that you would move aside any distractions at this point and allow us to just hear from you, to listen closely to what you have to say to us. And God, I repeat my prayers from earlier. Oh God, I pray over those who've entered in this room. I pray over their hearts and their minds. I pray for those who are also tuning in online. We thank you for the blessing that is being here this evening. And I pray, God, over the words that have come from my mouth that you would take control of my mouth and tongue now, oh God and that you would indeed hide me now behind your cross. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Growing up in the Christian faith, well, as many of you may know, I, I grew up Pentecostal charismatic, if you didn't know that, now you know. It's, it's weird, really. It's, it's I grew up Pentecostal charismatic, went to a Baptist school, was around Dr. Dan for a little while at HBU, HCU. And then my heart was strangely warmed, like John Wesley, the founder of Methodism. And I ended up in the Methodist church, and I'm grateful to be here. I love the Methodist church. But the Pentecostal charismatic tradition is, is known for its, its antics. I like the laugh there. I mean, we get, we get fired up. Like, the Good Friday is, is, is really in its own way just the setup for Sunday. And I don't mean to make every church like that. But I grew up in my faith saying, Good Friday, but Sunday's coming. And yet, as I've matured in my faith, I've learned that lingering in, into Good Friday allows me to reconcile with my pain, with my sorrow, with my sin. And it enables me to draw closer to a God who knows my pains, who knows my sorrows. So that when he rises on the third day, I can live into that hope, that living hope that St. Paul talks about. Brothers and sisters, we have come today to meditate on the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have come to look at the cross and behold him, for by his wounds we are healed. In our readings, through these seven last words of Christ, we have followed Jesus' crucifixion. Each one of these readings unwraps the story in a deeper way and invites us to consider that Jesus is our wounded healer. We look to the Gospels and we find the life of Jesus. It wasn't just his ministry, although that is the focus with which the Gospels have in mind, but we see the life of Jesus 
how he lived an ordinary human life just like you and me. He laughed with his friends, he ate with them, he had challenges with his family, and he cried when his friend Lazarus had died. He felt sorrow and pain like you and I. He was hungry and thirsty like you and me. I bet he told pretty good funny jokes. Probably not like me, but he, he said funny jokes too, I imagine. He lived an ordinary human life. I like how the message translation reads in the Gospel of St. John when it says that Jesus took on flesh and he pitched his tent in the neighborhood. He lived in a neighborhood with people. He lived ordinary life like you and I. Jesus was fully human and fully God. And yet, like all of our lives, we read of the challenges that Jesus had experienced, how he was tempted by worldly passions and desires. He, he was rejected by his own family. Can I get an amen? He was ridiculed by religious leaders for eating with tax collectors and sinners. And on a day like today, he would be betrayed by his own followers, those whom he loved and trusted, those whom he loved best. Jesus was acquainted with the fullness of the human experience. Every pain, every sorrow, every anguish that you and I have ever felt, Jesus felt. As he hung there on the cross, he cried, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Anybody else ever prayed that prayer and felt abandoned and felt isolated, felt alone? Felt isolated and alone when you were wounded? Can I get an amen? As Jesus on the cross. He feels isolated, alone, hanging there as he's wounded, as he's struggling to breathe. Jesus was acquainted with the human experience, and it is why Jesus is our wounded healer. The night in which he was taken up, Jesus experienced immense anxiety and grief to the point in which he sweat blood and now as he hangs on the cross and darkness covers over the land he's abandoned by his followers those who had promised to be with him to the end he's alone and yet if we had followed the story well enough we would know that this was coming. Jesus has for, had foreshadowed his death many times throughout the Gospels, and yet his disciples had struggled to believe it. They often questioned him about it. I imagine that they couldn't handle the thought of losing someone who had known them so well, seemed, seemed to know their different challenges, and cared for them like no one else did. But as we look on to the cross, I mean, as we have one here in this space, re recall the words, Jesus' words in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, when Jesus said, just as the serpent was lifted up in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. It's a reference to the story that we find in the book of Numbers as the people of Israel are, are bitten by serpents. And so Moses is instructed to make a bronze serpent and place it on a pole and those who would look on it would be healed. And so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that those who look on him would find their healing. 
Jesus was acquainted with the human experience, our sorrow, our anguish, our fears. He was acquainted with all of it. And yet, as he takes the cross and is crucified, he does so to heal us. Isaiah 53 reads, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep. Somebody say all. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus, who was acquainted with the fullness of the human experience, takes on our pain and our suffering, our sin. So that you and I could be redeemed, restored, peace back together, healed. That is indeed the work of Christ in our lives, and that is the reminder of Good Friday. Why do we call it Good Friday? If Jesus is hanging there on the cross, it's a Good Friday because it is the day in which he declared, It is finished. And indeed, it is. Amen. The divide has been closed. The dry season is over. The winter has ended. The sorrows of yesterday are no more. For though pain comes in the night, joy comes in the morning. It is finished. That which burned in us before is no more. It is gone. The account of debt of our sin has been satisfied. It is finished. Brothers and sisters, let us not despair this evening as Jesus hangs on the cross. Let us live in the healing that our wounded healer gives us, provides for us, and let us be reminded that it is finished here and now it is finished would you join me as I pray that over us even if you have to murmur it to yourself silently just say it is finished it is finished it's over it has been canceled Death has been defeated. It is finished. And indeed, O God, it is. You have won it all. You have disarmed the powers that have bothered us and oppressed us. Sin. My sin. The sins of this world. It is finished in the name of Jesus. Now, O God, we pray that we would lean into you this evening. You are our wounded healer, and there are many in this space, including myself, O God, that are in need of healing. Would you heal us, Lord? Heal us from the pains of the past. Heal us from our sorrows and our fears. 
Heal us from broken trust. Restore it, O oh God. It is finished. It's over. Heal us now, O oh God, by your wounds. Comfort us in our afflictions, O oh Lord. Help us to stay by your side even at this challenging time. We ask this all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we invite you now to stand as you are able for a song as we sing the old rugged cross, hymn number 405 in our hymn book. 504, excuse me. The old rugged cross, 504 in our hymn book. seated at this time. We have now come to our time of sharing of our presence and our gifts, and indeed we thank you for joining us this Friday evening. Uh, so if you are here in the, in the house with us, we invite you to just 
mark your attendance on the attendance pads. And if you are tuning in online, we invite you to mark your attendance online at mbumc.org. Um, and this is also our time to bring forward our gifts, that which the Lord has impressed on your heart to bring to him. And so let us give thanks for these gifts. As we pray for our presence and our gifts, our ushers will come forward and afterwards we'll have our closing prayer and then our benediction. So let us now pray over our presence and our gifts. God, we thank you for the blessing that is this day, the day of our Lord. And we thank you, God, for the blessing that is being here in this house. We pray, God, that you would also bless the gifts that we bring to fulfill the needs of this, your church. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, church. Friends, we have a closing prayer and then our benediction, and uh, we will, of course, have time uh, if you would like to come forward and pray, and we'll uh, designate that time for you all. But um, we have a few announcements to share with you all before we're dismissed from this space, and uh, really it's just sharing our scavenger hunt tomorrow. Uh, if you have a young person that you know, a youth uh, that would like to participate with us for our scavenger hunt tomorrow morning, at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. Uh, it's it, it's kind of hard to hype this up right now because I know we're in a solemn moment. Um, but it will be, indeed be a fun time, right, Miss Lisa? Miss Lisa around here? Is it, yes, she is here, but she, she left for a moment. Um, so youth, if you're here, we, we want to um, ce uh, celebrate this season as well with you all. And so come out for our scavenger hunt. Uh, Miss Lisa is working very hard to ensure that you have a hard time finding the scavenger items, uh, but I hear the prize is worth it. So uh, please uh, come join us. Uh, if you have any friends you'd like to uh, join, there'll be food as well. So uh, we'll have a fun time tomorrow. Uh, next slide, we want to remind you as well of our Easter Sunday service, the Sunday at 1030 a.m. Uh, it's going to be a special time, of course, as we uh, celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and so I, I encourage you, bring the celebration with you this Sunday. If you have a, if you have a tambourine at home that you haven't used, uh, uh, bring it. Blow the dust on it and bring it. Bring it with us. Uh, if you have a musical in instrument you want to use or a hidden talent, like singing, right, Dr. Dan? Right? We can, we can add last-minute singers right to the choir. We can make it happen. I love that. Uh, we're so grateful for Dr. Dan as always. Thank you. Thank you, brother. And Hilton as well. Thank you for singing for us, brother. So uh, back on track here. Uh, Sunday, East, uh, East, this, uh, Easter Sunday, this Sunday. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have our prayer breakfast uh, that is on April 13th there. Uh, and I love the theme. Uh, when women cry out, God answers. It's our Just Us Girls uh, prayer breakfast. 
uh, and our, our ladies have been working hard and are, have been prayerful over this. It's going to be a very special event. We, we, want you, we want you to miss it. And gentlemen, uh, don't feel left out. Uh, I will be there as, as, a, as well as other gentlemen who will also be participating. Uh, but let's, let's expect that we're probably going to be more helpful on that day uh, and still yet more prayerful as well. So uh, you can purchase your ticket uh, today as well, too, if you are needing to do that. So, all right, friends. Well, uh, I'm going to lead us in a closing prayer, and then we'll have our benediction. And uh, Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross. He who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. One thing I love doing here at Mission Bend is uh, being able to acknowledge our altar here. And so I invite you to stand as you're able to receive the benediction. As we are dismissed from this place, uh, I want to uh, say that uh, let, let us be sent in silence. Uh, and so... Uh, if you would like to come forward after the benediction to, to pray, the altar will be open. Uh, if you would like, uh, if you would like to pray with the pastor, I'll be on this side uh, of the altar to pray with and for you. Um, as we also are making an invitation that if you would like to say, "I want to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. I want to know this man who who is for me a wounded healer who understands my pain, my affliction." My sorrows, I'll be on this side of the altar, ready to pray with and for you. Receive now your benediction this evening as you are sent from this place. Brothers and sisters, though we are sent from this place quietly, mindful of our Lord and Savior and his death, let us also find encouragement in the words from Scripture. Sorrow and pain may come in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Remember, brothers and sisters, as you are sent from this place, that it is finished. It is finished. And the Lord Jesus Christ is our wounded healer. Receive him, know him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be blessed.